He is the voice of Southern New South Wales for Harness Racing. Matt Jones is joining me to have a chat. Matt, great to see you here at Albury. Good to see a big crowd on track tonight. Yeah, they're very lucky here because they get, uh, they've had two bites of the cherry in the last sort of six or seven weeks. The, the meeting New Year's Eve is absolutely massive off the charts and it's great to, uh, great to see so many people here for the Cup. Last year, I think there were two nominations for the Cup and it was never run um, and this is a huge turnaround so it's great to have so many people here. How did New South Wales get so lucky to have you back on the trots? It's a long, long story. I mean, my first love was harness racing, going back a long, long, long time ago. I was in Singapore and my wife and I decided we wanted to farm. So we, I, I was born in Wodonga. Uh, an opportunity came up and after seven and a half years in Singapore, I decided to come back home. We started a family and uh, I was on the border and then I'd been here for a little while and the phone rang and it was around the time where Alan Hull was sort of giving it away. It's a bit COVID times as well. You know, it's a bit of a, a long, complicated story, but now, you know, I'm incredibly fortunate to have, um, you know, twice a week harness racing, which I love. Did you grow up with harness racing in your blood? Uh, not in my blood, but um, I was one of those kids in my school, you know, that had the transistor radio and I was listening to it when I was about 15 and Dad was putting on 50 cent bets and stuff like that. And um, it was back in the era of Blossom Lady and Master Musician and Golden Rain when I was really following harness racing very closely. My favourite horse was a horse called Nicholas Brannock who was trained at St Arden and you know I just loved this horse for some reason and then I ended up doing a one year traineeship or the, the, the harness racing school at Bendigo. Um, so I have actually had a fair bit of hands on um, work with horses at least for that year and I started the year I had a, a, a really strong allergy to horses um, which I'd had since I was a little kid but by the time I'd worked with them a lot it sort of it did sort of ease off a little which has made working at horse racing possible for me. So when you came back from Singapore was there ever any thoughts of, of calling or are you looking were you looking to do something different? Well I very quickly realized that making money out of farming a hundred acres is borderline impossible in fact the the bottom line was going the wrong direction so I knew I had a skill I'd been doing it since I was about four or five years of age trying to do it um, and but you know there are guys that it were in positions and had been in positions for a long time so you just have, really have to wait um, until opportunities came up and I started with I think with Shepherd and Greyhounds I got a bit of a go and um, you know I'd never done many Greyhounds I'd always been Gallops and, and Harness um, so then eventually the, the opportunity came up here but no you've just got to wait your turn that's the nature of the beast. I think the first time I met you, you, you were in a broadcast box with Brian Martin yes. uh, um, at Flemington yes. on a Saturday. You used to, to yes. work alongside Brian and, and that another chance for you to sort of get the foot in the door. It, it was. I mean, um, I worked with Brian uh, probably six years. I, I watched him call many iconic races. Um, in fact, he had a very good horse at the time called Fields of Omar and any time that was in front near the line, I thought, hang on, I'm about to be on air, because he would just take the microphone off and just run off, <laughs> which, fair enough. Um, when that horse won the Cox Plate, Brian was doing the PA, and as soon as they crossed the line, he was gone. And so um, when Fields of Omar came back to Scales, I was the one that actually was saying, winner of the Cox Plate, you know, that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, great experience. Set up a lot of gear, worked with Roy Higgins, Brian Martin, made a lot of cups of tea. <laughs> we had a lot of good times, Brian, and, um, yeah, it seems like a, another lifetime ago now. So what about when you made your comeback here in New South Wales? Did it take a while for it to come back, or was it was it immediate? Uh, I probably... Oh, no, it took a few meetings to get into the swing of it. Um, probably, you don't, you don't... I think when you first start like that, my advice to any young caller is just get through. You know, you don't, don't try and be a hero. Don't try and, you know, do anything miraculous. Just get through for a while, and eventually your own style will sort of come through. You'll get to know the horses. That's the key and get to know the drivers and then you start to learn more to read the race and, and then it becomes just a more interesting race call to listen to. Do you have a favourite track here in southern New South Wales? Um, not really, but I, I mean, I, I like going to the ones that are well attended and um, this this track here, is, as I say, has had two goes in the last six or seven weeks. Wagga, we do most of our race calling, but I am a bit old-fashioned that I love the old race tracks as well. So we haven't done a lot of racing at Tamora and June which I miss, but you know, it doesn't worry me where I go, really. As long as I've got a decent look at the runners, that, that race callers don't like to be on bad angles or when they're too head-on in the straight. That really makes our job very difficult, but all the tracks are pretty good here. All the best of luck tonight with the Cup. Okay, thank you.